Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this episode of Inspirational Muslims, I will be interviewing Muhammad Ali Harat. Muhammad Ali Harat has become one of Britain's most influential figures. He is the CEO of Islam Channel TV. He also oversees the operation of Islam Channel Urdu, France Islam, Tiba Foundation, the Dawa Project and is the chairman of the Global Peace and Unity Festival. Under his leadership, Islam Channel has cemented itself as the premier Muslim broadcast entity in the West. Assalamu alaikum, brother, or shall I say, Sheikh Muhammad uh, Ali Harat. Uh, Any with respect for you. Jazakallah khair so much for making the time from your busy schedule to be part of this uh, Inspirational Muslim series. Um, there are a few people close to my heart that I feel really need to be part, as part of the series and you're definitely one of them and I've been very privileged and honoured that you made the time today. Uh, Sheikh, I know you personally. Um, and uh, a lot of us know you as a as the CEO of Islam Channel, but we know there's a, there's a lot more to your journey um, and where you've come from. So for the audience, if you can just, um, in, in a nutshell, um, introduce yourself um, and uh, what you are focusing on on at the moment. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, in brief, my name is Muhammad Ali Harat. Originally, I'm from Tunisia. I um, grew up in the suburbs of the capital, Tunisia, of Tunisia. And I studied, like everyone else, primary school and then high school. In, the private, in private, I studied with, the, with scholars. Then I left the country very, at a very young age, uh, went to Iran, and I studied in the uh, Sharia schools there. The very traditional, they call it Hausa. Mm. Uh, so, uh, the very traditional places. Then back to Tunisia, then we had a struggle against the dictatorship there, and I had to, like so many people, I had to go to prison. Uh, then I left and left the country for good. I went to so many places, uh, like Pakistan and other places. Ended up in during the war of Bosnia. I ended up in Bosnia Herzegovina. I was in Sarajevo during the siege of Sarajevo in 1993. Uh, then I left from there to come to this country. Went to university, a uh, couple of few universities actually. I went to Westminster University, University of London, London South Bank. Few universities I went to. Um, then I, like everyone else. I, work, different types of work, and in 2004 I set up Islam Channel, and since then I gave time to, to it. Mashallah. Sheikh, um, you've had so much achievement and so many challenges in your life, and you you know, give us an insight into some of them just now. What would you say has been your biggest challenge to date, and how did you overcome this? Um, the biggest challenge is the understanding of Islam. I consider myself as a, from very early age, I got in, involved in the Islamic movement and Islamic work, whether it is Dawah or charitable work or any other kind. It's the understanding or the misunderstanding of Islam. And the biggest challenge is the misunderstanding of Islam by Muslims. So that's, that's the first hurdle. The second hurdle is the misconception about Islam in the minds of non-Muslims. And the third hurdle is uh, people who are out there, it doesn't matter how much you explain to them the reality of Islam, uh, they still uh, want to make of Islam uh, the enemy of everything good. It's not the enemy of the West or enemy of democracy. Anything that mankind think is good, they want to portray Islam as the enemy of that good things, is the enemy of the common sense. So that's how Islam is portrayed. It, it is so unfortunate that so in recent years, and many Muslims came out and endorsed that view by their deeds, by their actions, the way they conducted themselves and they behaved, they endorsed these Islamophobic views. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest challenge. Alhamdulillah. And challenge that we're all facing along the probably the, I think all of us resonate with that challenge. 
Um, Sheikh, what do you feel from your list of Ashallah, uh, achievements that you're very humble about, but I, I know that you've achieved so much in your, in your journey. But what's close to your heart? What do you feel has been your greatest achievement to date? Um, it is Allah alam whether our achievements or not, but uh, what, I, uh, what I can say, Alhamdulillah, we, we always do our best. And Islamically, uh, we, we don't look at the results. Uh, we do the effort, and that's what is good about the beauty of Islam. We are required to do the effort, to do our best, and the result is in the, hand of, in the hands of Allah. And we get rewarded for the effort, not for the result. And even if the result is a failure, you still get your reward. So it's always worth it to try. Uh, I, think, I think after 9-11 and the 7-7 in London, there was an atmosphere of fear among the Muslim community in UK and we've heard some fatwas asking women to take off hijabs and asking Muslims to keep low profile and it's like an invite for Muslims to become a second class citizen Absolutely. imposing that states on ourselves by ourselves. I think the biggest achievement uh, at that time is for us to come out and say no to this approach and we have to stand up, we have to speak up, we have to be proud of what we are and the very few who try to hijack Islam do not represent us and there was the uh, Global Peace and Unity Conference yes, which sir. we held in 2005, a yes. few months, just a couple of months after the sad, sad events of 7-7. 7th of July 2005. So I think that's that was to me is a turning point, and uh, that was a, and that was a one contribution. Of the biggest, yeah. biggest events ever, I feel, uh, from my understanding, was 1,000, 50,000 people, something like that. Yeah, alhamdulillah, it was, uh, it, it was a big achievement. Yeah. Uh, I've been asked by one of the cabinet ministers, Lord Faulkner, who was the uh, justice minister. He asked me how did you manage to get it, to get all these numbers together and he, he told me that we, like mainstream political parties in UK, we will never dream yeah. or be able to get these numbers under one That's roof, one, listening yeah. to one speaker. Huge, yeah. So I said, I said it's not, it's not an effort from me, but a, there is a, a religious minority in this country feeling the oppression and oppressed people, they have to come together and that's what happened. Alhamdulillah, I hope that uh, Muslims keep together, keep united and carry on doing things together. Beautiful, yeah. And I remember attending that event and I was overwhelmed. Oh, oh, well, so beautiful to see so many Muslims and non-Muslims actually um, who came together in such a beautiful gathering. Um, Allah Mubarak. So, Sheikh, with all these challenges and you know, the journey that you've been on for this humanitarian work and for the betterment of community. How have you dealt with extreme levels of stress? How have you dealt with stress? Because at the moment, as we know, there's a whole uh, you know, mindfulness, mental health and anxiety have now surfaced. So many people are suffering from that. When you when you're faced with huge challenges and you know, when you try to do the greater good like you've been doing, you must have come across so many times where you've been extreme, extreme stress. So how have you dealt with that? Um, well, uh, Alhamdulillah, thanks God. Uh, but I went through difficult times in my life. Uh, some people asked me, did you see poverty? I said, I, I've seen hunger. I went through to hunger where days can pass by. Uh, so, overseas, uh, away from uh, family and country, and when you don't find anything to eat. So it's not just a matter of poverty. The levels of uh, stress, the difficulties I went through, only Allah knows uh, what are they. But the question I posed always to myself, how someone who doesn't believe in Allah, in God, who does not believe in the hereafter, how can they afford to go through this level of stress and stay alive. So that's the question. I think the help uh, I got is from the belief 
that I believe tomorrow is better because Allah said so. Uh, I believe that this life is a very short journey and I believe that the hereafter is coming. Justice will be done and this is a temporary life uh, towards the, uh, the eternal. eternal life. So that's, that's that kind of belief. Plus is uh, the Quran itself. The Quran itself, when uh, I read the Quran in different uh, situations, and I can't see any relationship between the situations. Uh, in the Quran, I read when I'm under emotional stress, under immense stress. It's not the same Quran I read when I'm just waking up uh, for Juma prayer or anything like that. Because then you see other meanings, you live it. You see the Quran is talking about you. You see that you have a connection with <coughs> Allah Almighty. Mm. I think the, to answer your question, the belief, the set of belief that as a Muslim I have on the Quran were the main, uh, the main help and the main support to make me uh, go through. I'm talking here about a very young boy as uh, young as 17, 18 years going through hell. So uh, if, if it wasn't for that kind of belief, uh, uh, the question I always put to myself, how on earth a non-believer can go through this? SubhanAllah, I think that's a very deep, deep insight and I share the same same thoughts on how do people deal with it without any faith of the hereafter. Sheikh, so um, in your in your journey um, from uh, in your very interesting colorful journey that you've had, um, you know like all of us we have role models that come in our lives at different stages from all walks of life. Uh, who would you say has been your most prevalent role model in this journey that you've had in you know, this epic journey of, for the betterment of humanity. Um, having gone through much difficulties, uh, having been part of calamities, having faced challenges in life, made me realize why someone so close, so beloved to Allah Almighty, had to go through calamities and problems and face difficulties. And that's Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If life was meant to be so rosy, if life was meant to be uh, so simple, so easy, it would have been made so easy for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As a role model is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Absolutely. Because he went through more than what we went through. The Prophet ﷺ was born as an orphan. So from day one, when he was unborn, as an unborn child, he lost his father. A newly born child, he lost his mother. And grew up as an orphan. And he faced so many challenges. You know, when, when uh, the children of Israel told Mary, uh, how, how comes you are an unmarried woman and you have a child? She said, I wish I was dead. I wish I was not alive. Why? Because the most important thing to her is her dignity. Yes. And they are questioning her dignity. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the most beloved character to him is al the person who never lies, the trustworthy. And they told him, you are lying. So you can see how he has been affected by this. Then he lost his uncle, then he lost his grandfather, then he lost his wife, then he lost almost everything. Then he lost his, his sons. So he went through a lot in his life. Peace be upon him. Uh, that made him a role model for us, not on his teachings, but on his daily life. 
So to answer your question is not is not a cliche to say, but it is a feeling uh, that you feel it only when you when you go through mm-hmm. what his sallallahu alaihi wasallam went through. Mm-hmm. So my role model is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondly, of course, any uh, one when you are growing up, you think your dad is the best of the world, yeah. and when you become a dad, you know that your dad was the best of the world putting up with all your craziness <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah so that's my 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 role model is beautiful Sheikh, um if you could go back to your former 16 year old self what would you advise him hmm things have changed nowadays uh, but i think uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised that people will be in the shadow of Allah on the day of judgment and he promised uh, categories and one of the categories is affected by age he said a young person who is in the path of Allah being young and in the path of Allah because everything else you can do it later in life but you can't become suddenly young mm. to go and to be among that character so the youth you have to seize the opportunity that you are young because the same deeds you are doing them as an old person if you do them when you are a young person you are guaranteed that you are going to be on the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment so that's uh, i would say uh, that's i would advise my self to do that secondly i think um, education uh, memorizing the quran at a very young age because again that's something it becomes so difficult when you grow up so difficult uh, you look after your body when you are young because the result of of uh, of neglecting yourself neglecting your your body the result is not going to be when you are young the result will be gone will become when you are old when you are old it is, is you cannot unring the bell you can you can't go back so those are my advices to any person who's in his teens is a growing up it's a beautiful uh, words of wisdom shake on mubarak my last question to you shake is question that really uh, when you when I'm asked this question I, it really makes me reflect is what motivates you in in the path in the journey that you've taken to you've made so many sacrifices and I know I know this person in for, for the betterment of humanity for the betterment of the Muslim community and non-Muslims and journey to humanity what motivates you every day because you must get disheartened so many times disappointed in people maybe who let you down what keeps you motivated knowing as a believer knowing that everything is written there knowing that everything is saved for you knowing you will meet your good deeds one day knowing it doesn't really matter whether you are recognized in this life or not whether people accept you or not whether you achieve or not uh, you will know that there is a day that is coming that is not far where everything will be recognized and uh, there is a beautiful time where you meet your creator and you meet your lord we know all of that we know that is coming so that keeps you going keeps you going knowing that nothing is going to be lost so, yeah. beautiful and check how would um, the audience because i'm sure there's so many people who would like to learn from your your wisdom and be in touch whether it's through mentoring is or just to get in touch with you um what is the best preferred method you would prefer people to reach out to you if they would like uh, benefit from your time i would say people should always look up to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam all mankind all people uh, we are sinners uh, we do mistakes and my worry is people will mix the message with the person the only perfect person is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam islam 
is a perfect religion. Muslims are not perfect people. The only person chosen by God to be perfect is the Prophet So we always, uh, when we talk about Islam, we talk about the Prophet Anyone else doesn't really matter. We take whatever is good from them and we leave whatever is not good. So I'm not going to say bad, but whatever we think is not good. So we leave it aside. Uh, otherwise, in practical terms, uh, I'm available and happy, inshallah, to, to meet my brothers, sisters, and uh, we are always happy to be uh, together because that's what we need. We need, to, we need the unity among Muslims. We need to exchange ideas. We need to exchange experiences. I think the older generation, uh, thanks to them, we have all these mosques, Islamic centers, schools, and media, and so on. I think it is time also to pass on to pass on to new generations. And that transition period sh should be done as smooth as possible. And it can't be smooth unless there is a dialogue, uh, there is exchange of ideas, and there is a gradual handover to the new generation to take the lead, inshallah. So that's beautiful to hear. So uh, would, would you have a, a preferred email address or from um, is uh, at Islam Channel. All Islam Channel. Yeah. Uh, and you're on social media and LinkedIn as well, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Islam Channel contact information is there. Yeah. So we'll get that. We'll put that in the description in the video. Sheikh, I uh, can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Jazakallah khair so much. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Asalaam Wa Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the interview. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're alerted as we upload more inspirational Muslim videos.